welcome to Adapted Plus. Thank you to deciding to watch this video. And this review prep, we're working on test taking strategy. This is to help out, show you how you can approach endless questions flawlessly without any problem. Adapt English way. Stay tuned. You'll be happy. Short questions, but loaded with concepts. What is the key? First way, read the question from the back. Find the acts of the question. Look for the keys. The buzzword. Rewrite a question. Focus on the buzzword and use it to answer the question. That's all. Reading the question from the back will make you focus. What is the next first action? That's all. My first action, what I want to do with this patient, and has found a client with what? Type 2 diabetes unresponsive. You see what I did? Type 2 diabetes unresponsive first action. What are my buzzwords? First action unresponsive. Type 2 diabetes, I know it's a trap. I'm not worried about it because I have to follow principles of medicine. Every time you see a patient unresponsive, forget about their medical problem. Go with the ACLS protocol. ACLS protocol say, if I see a patient that is unresponsive, what is the next thing I do? I call for help. What has the question already given you? If I see a patient on the floor, the first thing I will do, check for responsiveness. The question already given you. The question said unresponsive. That means an assessment has been made and it shows that the patient is unresponsive. The next step is for me to call for help. After I call for help, check my pulse, I check for my breathing, and if none of them, I start doing my CPR. There's the good strategy. I know patient already been assessed, already assessed because they told me patient is unresponsive. Therefore, my next step is not to give them glucagon or D50. Testicle strategy, if type 2 diabetes is what is causing the problem, both, both 1 and 2 will do the same thing. Glucagon will increase the patient, what? Ox uh, glucose, glucagon will also do the same thing. Why would I choose one over the other? D50 and glucagon will do the same thing. Therefore, I know this is wrong. The question has nothing to do with type 2 diabetes. I'm going to call for it. I cannot do a CPR until I check the support or there's no breathing. But most of the time, CPR is to check for pulse. Therefore, this is wrong. The right answer is number three, call for help. Adapt and place way. You see what I did? That's the way you should do it. Number one is that. Number two, same strategy. We're going to tackle this question the same way, but we're going to use concept all over. As you already know, I'm a concept guy, and that that's what you should focus on. What is the next appropriate response? A nurse is caring for a client with what? Borderline personality. I've underlined the buzzword. The client told the nurse that everyone hates me except you. They're sticking strategy, appropriate response, buzzword, personality disorder, borderline. What did the patient say? Everyone hates me except you. If they give you a personality disorder question, always attack the basis of the personality disorder. Keyword, borderline personality disorder. What do they do? They split. They create confusion and they do bad cap and good cap. And therefore, it's going to create confusion between the nurses, select one against the another and try to be what? Manipulative. Manipulative. Therefore, we want to prevent her from being manipulated, being manipulated. So what should we do? A proper response. We act in the therapeutic way, but tack their basis of their problem. Ignoring the statement is not a good thing. 
telling the charge then to assign senior nurses will not change. They're going to be manipulative and cause more problem. The best way is to rotate people. That they don't see one person multiple times, just once, and they cannot manipulate them. Therapeutic communication, never ask why. At the same time, if you ask this patient, why did, does they think, do they think everybody is against them is going to be the time for them to be more manipulative? The why make this answer choice wrong? At the same time, don't ask, this is the person you don't want to ask why you think so. They being manipulative. Right answer, number three, adapting this way. You got it. I know you guys got it. So that one is down. Next question. Same concept, we keep on doing it. Which of the following is concerning? That means bad stuff. I underline bad stuff. So I pay attention to that. And then she's caring for a client who sustained what? Severe brain injury from motor vehicle accident. Which of this showed that is a bad stuff? I look at it, I said, mm, concerning brain injury. I look at the answer choices, they are all motor function. What is this is telling me? It's telling me I should look for my motor function. The way, best way to look for motor function, usually to calculate your GCS, you do E4, D5, M6. And to look for motor function, I call it old band. Old band. And what is old band? O is just obey command. L what they localize, they can find where the pain is located. D, they draw away from pain. B, what? They burn, which is what? Flexion. Okay, and it's the same thing as decorticate. And then, the E is what? Extension. And what did they do? De celebrate. De celebrate. Right? And the N, N is basically nothing. And then when you assign numbers to them, you can tell this is six, five, four, three, right? Two. And one, which one at the lowest? There was nothing answer choice there. There's a withdrawal, I, I eliminated it. Localized is way up. Flexion is what? Three, extension, that is rigid extension, is two. And therefore, two is worse than three. And therefore, I'm picking what? Number four. You see, easy, easy. You got it. You guys got it. You can kill and place easily, right? The nurse is caring for a newborn with this is wrong, is the trilogy of power, right? Which of the following is concerning? Whenever they give you a pathology and they say which one is concerning, that means bad stuff. You got to be sharp, meaning you have one second or you're not looking for expected finding. If you're looking for expected finding, pick the bad stuff that is more, a, a, one of the expected finding that is really bad. In tetrarology of Foley, they have what? Pulmonary stenosis, right ventricular hypertrophy. Because of that, they have ventricular septo defect and they have overriding of the aorta. What is this doing? Is just converting right to sh left shunt so that you can have blood to the system. There's less blood flow, there's less oxygen because the blood as you see the lung. What happened? When they, they are usually cyanotic at birth. When they have stress, they feeding, they agitated, they become cyanotic. Because they become cyanotic, they get fed small, small male at a time, poor weight gain. They have ventricular septal defect, heart failure, they're going to have 
Uh, so when you have hemoglobin of 57, that is polycythemia vera. This is going to form clot, blood clot, and they're going to have stroke. This is bad. If they give you hematocrit and you don't know what is hemoglobin, it's divided by three. So 57 divided by three is close to 19. That is the relationship between hemoglobin and hematocrit. It's usually three. So when your hemoglobin is 12, your hematocrit has to be 36. This one is 57. Third, you die. Hemoglobin is 19. This is too viscous blood. It's going to form stroke. It's clots. And therefore, number four is your best friend. Right? That's a priority. Same thing. Same strategy. What is the next best action? And nurse is caring for a client who is post thyroidectomy for grave disease. The client report tingling and numbness around the mouth. Buzzword, there's a batch of buzzwords, but pick the one that will help you answer the question. I told you, read the question from the back. What is the next best action? What is the situation before the next best action? What is the problem? Client report tingling and numbness around the mouth. So that is the most important, and this is related to what? Thyroidectomy. Don't worry about the grave disease. It's related to thyroidectomy. When I remove your thyroid, and all of a sudden you have tingling, numbness around the mouth, I know the problem. When I remove your thyroid, think you can have airway issue from bleeding. So you can have bleeding problem, and you can have hypocalcemia. Which of these symptoms is hypocalcemia? You see, I brought my content. I don't know whether it's an airway problem or a bleeding problem, hypocalcemia. Based on the symptoms, tingling and numbness is hypocalcemia. Therefore, I need to give this patient I, what calcium. Look at the answer choice. Rapid response will say, go away from me. Patient is not having glucose problem. Now you're left with this. Do you call the doctor or you call the doctor? Request means... You have talked to the doctor and you're telling them what you want. Okay, you are not playing doctor. They show you that you know what is going on. Request an order for comprehensive metabolic panel. That means you call the doctor and you know what you want because you have assessed the patient and you know what you think they be given. And they can say no. That this answer, the best action, because you know what is the problem, you're requesting metabolic panel so that we can replace patient calcium based on the value we're going to get. Why not basic metabolic panel but comprehensive? Because basic will give you calcium, but there's no albumin. Metabolic will give you albumin because it tell, you can get LFTs, liver function test. Calcium is regulated by albumin. Most of your calcium is bound to albumin. Therefore, if you have low albumin, your total calcium level is going to go down because there's no albumin to bind to calcium. Only free amount of calcium flowed around. We don't have to go into details. I don't think the boss will borrow it too much. If they put BMP, it's still right. But number four is your right answer. If you need details of number four, email me. I can explain it. Or okay, just put a comment there. I will explain it to you. Another question. Test taking strategy. What is the next first action? A nurse is caring for a client with the pacemaker in the step down unit. The client is what? Sweaty, diaphoretic. Cardiac monitor indicate failure to capture. What should you do? Test taking strategy, you go to the juggler. That's the buzzword. Pacemaker, diaphoretic, capture. You see how I connect them? Pacemaker, diaphoretic, capture. What is pacemaker? Ask yourself, what is it used for? It's to use to regulate your heart. There's two types of pacemaker. There's a demand one. That means you can you control your heart rate, but then it can drop it, setting lower, lower level, and then your pacemaker will kick in and bring you back to a better heart rate. They are the on-demand, non-demand one, basically, it just pays you whether you like it or not. That means your heart cannot control its heart rate. And it's used for bradycardia. If the machine said, I cannot capture, 
that means you're breathing down and you have diaphoretic. What would you do? Would you give them atropine? Do you cardiovet them or you call the doctor or you do external pacemaker? What was helping them? The pacemaker. Replace the pacemaker. This is not your first action. Cardioversion, absolutely wrong. Calling the doctor will not help. External pacemaker means this is the same as transcutaneous pacemaker. If they, they, they don't put external pacemaker, they will put transcutaneous pacemaker, which is the same. So right answer, number three. Okay. Number seven. What do we have? A client with tight reading from the back. Which of the following the next you respect? Select or apply. A client with type 2 diabetes presented to the emergency room with diagnosis of what? Hyperosmolar, hyperglycemic state. Which of the following you should respect? If you want to learn how to answer this question, the content check at that thing first. But don't ever leave this video without mastering this. You have to, your board will confuse you with DKA and HHS. They are the same, but different part of physiology in terms of the side effect, the condition. This is a type one disease, okay? This is type two, right? That is the problem. Type one, type two. DKA, no insulin. These people, they have insulin. Because of that, the body get tricked. They trick them. So the, the glucose will go up and go up and go up because the body thinks it has insulin to the point that by the time they realize, hey, we are in trouble, insulin is not enough, they get sick and come in, in coma of 10 days. Therefore, these people, usually their glucose can go 600 to like 1,200. DKA, they cannot stand the high glucose because they have no insulin and your body will say 250, we have enough. Or 250 to 300, we have enough. We got to go to the hospital. They both dehydrated. Okay, both of them are dehydrated. But because DKA, because DKA has no insulin, no insulin, no insulin at all, and HHS has insulin floating around type 2, DKA will form ketones. These people know ketones. If you have ketones, you become acidotic, and therefore your pH will be less than 7.35. Or 7.4. Okay. And these people, pH normal because they have no acidosis. If you have no acidosis, you're not going to be Cushman. Cushman breathing is to get rid of the acid. Yeah, negative. This is positive Cushman. Right? There is no going to be what? The pH is going to be no, uh, normal for these people, uh, HHS and not uh, P um, DKA. They're both going to be dehydrated. Mucous memory will be what? Dry in all of them. These people, you know, HHS, they have neurological symptoms. DKA, mostly abdominal pain. I they took they can go into coma, but it takes a long time compared to these people. Um, HHS, they can be obtunded when they come in. So these are the key features you should pay attention to. This is acid. I don't expect it in HHS. Ketones, I don't expect it. Kushma, I don't expect it. Dry mucous memory, it means I'm dry. Blood glucose should be greater than 250. Let's take in strategy, content, answering this question flawlessly. I hope you enjoy it. Number eight, what do we have? A client, which of the following the nurse you respect? Sata. 
A client with chronic venous insufficiency present to the vascular clinic, testicle strategy. I have chronic venous insufficiency. This is the same as for, for venous disease, and people use that word. Chronic venous insufficiency is the best way. What do I expect? Do bidirectional thinking. You say, well, I shouldn't see any PADs signs over there. Then you tell yourself, what is PAD? PAD means I don't have blood. PV, PV, peripheral venous disease, you have too much blood, your blood is going to your leg, it doesn't even want it. So if you, you that means you over flourish with blood. It's too much blood going to your leg, blood is warm. Do you think your blood is going to be cold? No. If there's too much blood going to your leg, your leg will be happy. Your toes will be happy. They're not going to be black. If there's too much blood going to your head, leg, yeah, the blood will stay there. It will get so much blood. The emocidrin of the blood from the ion will deposit to the skin and you get browning pigmentation. If there's too much blood in your leg, blood is flowing there. When you lift up your leg up, then your leg is not going to be what? Color. There's no way. Color and elevation, that means your leg getting white. And that is PAD. If the leg is getting a bunch of blood, oxygen, your hair will grow. They will be so happy. And then your pulses, oh, they'll be bounding like. And you can see there's the key strategy based on content. There's only one answer choice there. If you answer more than one, you get it wrong. You see, there's no polar and elevation. The absence of air is not going to be there. Image pulses is not going to be there. Toe gangrene is not going to be there. Cold extremity is not going to be there. The only thing is browning pigmentation based on this one word I wrote. I'm just using it as my guide. No my nine. And this is aware of a four asthma client with exacerbation. Which client need immediate intervention? This question is loaded. Think about it. Asthma patient, when they come in, they sick, they wheezing. Asthma patient never stop wheezing. If asthma patient come in and you treat them, they will continue to wheeze and wheeze and wheeze and wheeze. The wheezing get better, but they will never stop wheezing. Therefore, wheezing after abodro. It's okay. If asthma patient come in, they, they're looking for oxygen. They will be hypoxic. They will be breathing fast. Their heart rate will do what? Go up. If you give them a butyrol, heart rate goes up. They will be shaky. They will have tremor, tachycardia, hypokalemia, hypoglycemia, because it's what? Beta agonist and therefore this is when it's the key strategy we gotta pick this how does it become wrong asthma patient when they come in respiratory rate is high they blowing out to be a co2 they want to get oxygen asthma patient always have like respiratory alkalosis that means they are ph is greater than 7.4, right? If I see pH of 7.3, I'm acidotic. When an asthma patient is acidotic, that means they're tired, they're not breathing anymore. It's the same as silent chest. Asthma patient who has a silent chest is a priority. Asthma patient who has fatigue is a priority. Asthma patient whose lung sound no breath sound there is a priority. Test the king strategy, please choose three. But look at the answer choice. Ask yourself, which of these answers surprises you? If you can figure out, you can use B-sharp. If you can use B-sharp, every time you see concerning, immediate, first, ask yourself, which one is surprising me? Does heart rate surprises you? Does asthma patient wheezing after abdominal surprises you? Does pH of 7.3 surprises you? Or hand trauma surprises you? If it does, pick it. But what surprises me is this acidosis.
in an art motivation. Um, I don't like it. I'm picking it as my answer. Okay. And then number 12, number 10. Select and apply. We took the following. The nurse should respect the nurse is caring for a client with new diagnosis of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Oh, yes. Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Test taking strategy. You see a word that you don't know, but you're familiar with it. What do you think Hashimoto thyroiditis is? I write it, hypothyroid. Oh, it's the same thing. Oh, new diagnosis of hypothyroid. Then you ask yourself, what is hypothyroid? Uh, thyroid hormone speed things up. It helps with metabolism. Everything goes up with thyroid hormone. If you are hypo, you have low level. Look at what I'm going to say. Hypothyroid, everything goes down except weight. So their weight goes up. These two sentences, I take this bag of concept, I bring it here. Right? Is cold going down? Yes. Is your heart rate going down? No. So is your diarrhea? Diarrhea means things are going up. I'm looking for constipation. BMI of 19, that means you're almost close to anorexic. What did I say? Everything goes down except weight. So weight should go up. When weight goes up, BMI goes up. Therefore, this is wrong. Everything goes up, down, except what? Weight. Deep tender reflex is too high. Supposed to go down. Therefore, how many answer traits are there? One. In the next, <clears throat> this next generation anklets, never pick more than you can bite. If you can bite one, just bite one. If you can buy two, just buy two. In the select or apply, if they give you four ans five answers, and you only know one is right, I want you to be one on one percent. Don't pick an answer because you are 98 percent in the select or apply. Just let it go. You're better off having one answer choice right and move on. Because if that one is wrong, it will cancel your answer choice. So pick those you're confident. Otherwise, you lose more points. Right? So only one answer choice there. Five choices or one answer. Same thing here. Concept. Select and apply. And then she's caring for a client. Five days. What your diarrhea? Which of the following the next you would expect? Then I fall back to my content. If I see a patient who's having diarrhea for five days, I know it's what? Dehydrated. If you dehydrated, there's a way we can measure your dehydration. Bring that content and look at what I've given you and just attack each one of them with dehydration. If you've lost a lot of water, your heart rate will go up to compensate. Remember, cardiac output is what? Stroke volume times what? Heart rate. If your stroke volume go down, in order to maintain your cardiac output, your heart rate goes up. That's the key strategy. Therefore, I know this is right. Stroke volume go down, blood pressure is going down. Therefore, this is wrong. If you lost a lot of water, your kidney will say, I'm not getting rid of any water. Your urine will be pungent, will smell. Therefore, urine-specific gravity goes up. It's not going to go down. If your blood has lost a lot of water, it's going to be viscous. When it gets viscous, it gets thicker. Therefore, hematocrate will be elevated. This one, if you cannot see, think about it. When you lose a lot of water, your kidney is not going to be happy. Your creatinine goes down. When your creatinine goes down, in order to maintain, sorry, when you, your creatinine goes up, okay, in order to maintain the ratio, the BU and creatinine ratio is 20 to 1. When creatinine goes up because you dehydrated, your BUN also goes up. 
in order to maintain the ratio. So BUN should go up, it should not go down. When you lost a lot of fluid, your blood pressure is down, your central venous pressure is going to go down. Therefore, right hand says it's one and four. Straightforward, right? And the last one. I know you've seen this question before. Let's break the highs. Who needs to be seen first? You got to be sharp. And this is aware of four clients. A client with diabetes with blood glucose of what? 60. And he's confused. A client with cellulitis of the leg and confused. A client with hyponatremia and confused. A client with leg femur fracture and confused. When they give you a case like that, you got to be sharp. And how to be sharp? You look for the breathing problem, electrolyte, shock sepsis, hypoglycemia, hypothermia, hypothermia, airway, lethargy, that's neurological problem, and pain. Neurological problem, I see neuro, confusion, 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 cancel out. What is causing the confusion? Diabetes and sugar. Cellulitis is sepsis, is here, right? Hyponatremia, electrolytes here, yes. Low sodium, causing confusion. Left femur fracture, do I see it here? Yes, you see it. Left femur fracture is fat embolism. Then you ask yourself, which one causing confusion is more dangerous? Low glucose, I'll give you some sugar, uh, sugar so that you can, or I'll give you glucagon. Cellulitis, I know you sepsis. I'll, I'll treat your sepsis with antibody. I put natremia, I'm going to uh, replace your sodium. We cannot replace your sodium that fast. If we replace it too fast, we call something CPM, central pontine myelosis. You're not supposed to do that. Even with the low sodium of 120, you got to increase the sodium slowly, put them on seizure precaution and other things. But left femur fracture, what does that mean? Fat embolism. It means fat embolism, it goes to your brain, your skin, and your lung. They confuse because fat has gone to the brain. If it has gone to the brain, guess what? It's already in the blood. It's going to your lungs right now. If I see airway, I'm picking it. Therefore, the confusion for number four is more dangerous than the confusion for number two or number three or number one. Therefore, I'm going to go with the fat embolism, which is more likely to kill the patient faster than hyponatremia, that we got to replace it slowly, put the patient in seizure precaution, that I will go with number four. Thank you for watching. Adapt and close with. Share this video if you like it. If you like it, put a comment. Share it with your friends. Invite more friends so that we can grow this channel. We have a review. If you're interested, send me an email. You will love it. Enjoy. Have a good day. Good luck. All the best. Bye.